Oh, I was going to say, will you, will I have access to it? Yeah, I'll send it to you later. I can send it to you once the call's done. And also I'm going to send you this uh, PowerPoint when we get done as well. Okay. Um, so that's the other thing. Again, just to recap what we just went over, basically the no social icons, having that is important. Having the NAP information, your name, address, and phone number somewhere on the home page is going to be important. Usually the address um, is towards the bottom of the page in the footer. I would recommend having the phone number right here on the book now part, except for actually making it to where when they click it, it calls your office instead of going to a form. Um, and then finally, homepage call to action. Basically what I was thinking with this is usually what helps, and I know it seems like a small thing, but actually centering it on the homepage, making the button a little bit more prominent by adding either an outline color or something around it to make the call to action pop. Um, and that's gonna actually help drive people to click on that book appointment option more often than not. Um, so what we could, what you could possibly do is if you could maybe shift your image to the right a little bit, so that way the girl kind of still stands out apart from the text, um, but making the button a little bit more prominent. And then I would say also the, another thing is always capitalize your letters like the H, the W, S, R, 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 all of those should be capitalized. It just helps the text really pop and stand out. And that's really like your, you know, your, your primary saying or your call to action that you're going to use to get people to want to do business with you. Um, so those are just a few things about really the homepage that we're gonna talk about. Next is we're gonna get into the details of what we can help you do to rank on search engines more importantly. Um, because this is probably the most important aspect for your business, your professional service, right? And when somebody goes online to look for a professional service or say they don't know what type, like if you want to go look for a lawnmower or a roofer or a plumber, what is the first thing and the first step that everybody always does these days? I mean, I get advice on social media, to be honest. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's actually a good answer too. That's a great way. Um, a lot of people, if they don't have like a friend group or if they're not sure like who to ask on social, the first thing they do is go to Google and they'll type in, you oh, know, okay, yeah. right. Lawn mower near or lawn care service near me, plumber near me, something like that. And that's really where we saw a lot of the issue was with your website is it's not ranking in search engines, except for a couple of terms. And it's not ranking in the maps section where it actually shows the physical location. It shows the reviews, the website, like you see when you look up a restaurant. Um, and so by doing all of these things, so for example, and I know this probably sounds like a foreign language, but meta descriptions are essentially each page of your website has a mini description that they take and send to Google. So Google knows what your website is about. And a lot of these things are missing. So alt text is basically for images. Uh, basically your images don't have a description. So you have to think Google's a computer, right? So Google can't look at an image and know what that Im image is. We as marketers have to tell Google what that image is. And so that's what alt text does. It, it gives Google a description of what the images are. And then it takes that and it indexes it in its search console. Same thing with headers. Headers are things like this. We go to your website. You can see right here, this is a header. This right here is a header. And we're missing keywords in your header that you can easily change up. That'll help Google start to recognize, number one, what type of service you provide, which you actually have that. We have the service, but what we're missing is the location. So if we go to, for example, hypnobirthing, we can see here, hypnobirthing natural child, childbirth education, fine. But what you should do is hypnobirthing natural childbirth education in coming Georgia. And the reason why is because now Google knows not only what service you provide, but where you provide it at. Make sense? Sure. So going back to now, this. Let, let me ask you something. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think I have to talk into my phone because, um, so, I mean, just understanding that we, you know, we are a wellness center. People come here to unwind, relax, you know, unplug. So, you know, I just want to make sure that we keep that in mind. And, and, and I, you know, I appreciate all of the suggestions. Um, but, um, you know, like when I see some websites that are like, you know, like reds and blacks and, you know, sure. all the, all the excitement, um, you know, that's, it doesn't really represent us so much. Right. Sure. Sure. And I totally understand you're, you know, you're completely right. Your business is about relaxation. It's about making the, the customer feel comfortable at the end of the day. 
we have to get those customers in the door, right? So that way we get them to be relaxed. And that's really the only thing that we have to focus on from there is to make sure that to get them to relax, we actually have to get those people in the door. To do that, we have to get Google to recognize your website the right way. Um, and to do that, again, it's small changes. We don't even have to change colors, like adding in reds and you know making it really pop like that. But really, the, the words we're targeting on the page or the words we're using on the page is really okay. where that becomes important. Um, especially with your location keywords. And we have a couple other things I want to mention there as well. Um, another thing is duplicate H2s. Again, this is a, so a subheading is an H2. This right here is actually called considered an H2. It's a subheading. The reason why this is important is because Google, when you, let's say you have five pages on your website, right? One's for hypnobirthing, one's for, we'll talk about, you know, detox regimens, hypnotherapy, liposage, um, and massage therapy. We have those five pages, but the subheading uses the exact same words. Google, as the computer, doesn't know how to discern the difference between the five pages. So it actually comes up as an error on search engines, and they say, well, we don't know what page this is really about because a lot of the words being used are the same. And so that's where we would need to make a couple of adjustments as well, is just by, why is this being so silly? by making sure that we use different types of wording for the different types of services. And again, those are just small minor adjustments to the, the actual wording being used. Um, large CSS file, what this essentially means is whoever built the website probably didn't compress the images. Um, when you have an image and it's taken from a camera, it's the full size image. It's got all the pixelation to it. What we do when we put images online, we actually compress them and make the file size smaller, but that doesn't do anything to the, uh, the look of the image itself. Um, and that's probably just whoever built the website or put it together, they didn't compress the images. That's, again, another easy, easy fix. Um, taking all of those things into account, plus a couple of small things that we won't get into just because it's just all marketing mumbo jumbo, but basically there's a bunch of adjustments that we can make that will increase site speed, which we'll talk about in a second. Actually, I can just jump forward to that because that should have been put right there. So your site speed is actually a, it's hard to see, but a 51 on mobile and a 76 on desktop. That's another thing that's keeping Google from ranking you. And this is actually from Google's page speed insights tool. You can use it yourself if you like. Um, again, it's Google page speed insights. And what that does is it shows you again, the performance of your website from a speed perspective. Google really takes speed into account. And the reason why is because that has to deal with something called user experience. Have you ever been to a website, you tried to click over to it and it took 45 seconds just to load the site. You said, forget this. I'm just going to go back, find it. And that's, it. that's not what's happening every time, but on the first time a visitor comes to your website, it's a little bit slower than what they're used to. And so Google's actually penalizing your website for that happening. So they rank you a little bit lower than your competitors. And again, these are all just cosmetic issues that we can fix and really technical issues that we can fix by making a couple of adjustments to how the site was built. Um, and that's really the issue a lot of web developers and it's unfortunate because they should take this into account. A lot of web developers, when they're building websites, don't consider SEO. Have you heard of SEO before? Yes, I have. Cool. And that's what they're not taking into consideration when that's really one of the most important things to the design of your website. But again, luckily, most of these things are super simple fixes that won't be too complicated. Uh, next is the meta descriptions. Like I mentioned, we have about two missing as far as alt texts, let me see, meta description. Okay, sorry, meta description, we have 12. And alt text, we have 10 different alt texts missing. So again, those are the descriptions of the pages and the descriptions of the images. We definitely want to get those uh, updated. As you can see here, this is a poll from your website. And here's what I was talking about with your H2s, classes for mothers, classes for mothers. So Google knows, but we can reword those in different ways. Classes for moms, classes for pregnant women. There's several different ways we can reword it. So that way, excuse me, Google doesn't think it's just one page being duplicated 12 different times. Sure. Um, and then as far as H H1s and H2s, some of them are being classified the wrong way. So for example, Google, for some reason, like on your homepage, is actually pulling this right here, 
which is your head, your main primary heading. So Google, you know, it's kind of like when you're reading a book, you want the primary heading to talk about what the whole chapter is going to be about. And then the subheadings talk about the subsections. Google's actually getting confused and they think this is your heading and this is your subheading, which is it kind of a no, no in the marketing world, just because again, we want Google to understand very clearly, this is the top level category. This is our subcategory for the website. And it helps really just for organizational purposes. So, and then finally, the large CSS file. Again, this is just slowing down your site speed. If we can get this to be about a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, somewhere in there, you're going to instantly start to see your site start to rank a little bit higher on Google just for that one thing. Over the last several years, Google, Google has actually mentioned the fact that this is one of their most important factors because they rank user experience as far as users having a good experience on a website as probably the most important ranking factor out of the hundreds of ranking factors that they use to determine where you should rank in search results. Okay. So any questions about any of that so far? No. Okay, cool. And if you have any questions, don't worry, we, we will totally, you know, get anything you have out of the way, because I know some of this can be confusing if you don't deal with it on a regular basis, but I want to make sure you understand everything perfectly. Now, as far as keywords, this is super important with SEO because of the fact that you want to rank for your primary keywords. For example, you want to be ranking for detox regimens, hypnobirthing, hypnotherapy, liposage, massage therapy, Reiki, all of the services that you provide, we want to be ranking on the first page of search results because I'm sure you, just like I, don't go to the second page or the third page of Google's search results, right? Right. Pretty much we use the first page and that's what we're not doing. And really this can be done by adjusting the content that you have on your pages as well as just creating what I would simply do. Each one of these keywords that we're trying to target, we would create a small blog article, 500 words at the very minimum. And that's going to help Google understand that not only on this one page are we talking about detox regimens, but we also have a mini article that talks a little bit further about detox regimens and using different variations. How, what's another way that you would say detox regimen? Um, I mean like detox cleansing? program or, you know, de uh, what about uh, cleansing? Or yeah, of course. Cleanse? Yeah. Right. So, and that's what we would do on that blog article. We would try to use different variations. So that way Google understands, okay, it's a detox regimen cleansing surprisingly, and it still blows my mind. Google understands those are the exact same thing because they're often searched together or they're included in different articles across the web. So that's what we really want to get Google to understand. And all of these things put together, again, will help you start to rank on search engines a lot higher. Okay. Um, currently, you're ranking for hypnobirthing Atlanta. And that's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Where would you say most of your current clientele come from? Probably coming Alpharetta, Johns Creek, that, those areas? Yeah, I do get a fair amount of hypnobirthing people from Atlanta. Okay, okay. Uh, um, but yes, more, I would say for our regular services, probably, um, you know, coming Alpharetta, Johns Creek, um, okay. you know, Gainesville. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that's important to know because with hypnobirthing, we would actually want to target Atlanta then because you're getting customers from there. And I feel like hypnobirthing is kind of like, it's not as common of a service as some of your other services, right? You're very specialized in that area, which is right. good. So with hypnobirthing, Targeting Atlanta is probably the right move. With your other services, you're still targeting Atlanta, but most of your customers, like you said, are coming from Cumming, Johns Creek, Alpharetta, Gainesville. So those are the, actually the geolocation uh, keywords that we want to target for those specific services. And that, again, will help you to start ranking higher in search engines. So really, if you started to create blog content, and most people don't do this the right way, so if you do decide to do it on your own, please just ask and I will give you some pointers to writing your blog content. Um, obviously, you can have us do it if you like, but if you do decide to do it, just make sure that you're including those location keywords like coming Alpharetta, all, all of your location keywords, as well as your primary keyword, which would be like hypnotherapy, stuff like that, and then different variations of hypnotherapy in the content that you're going to create. Make sense? Yes. Cool. Um, so we went over page speed, so we can go through that. Uh, this is just an example. I'm sure you've done this search before a hundred times and seen yourself, but just to show we couldn't find any results. And this was on the first, really, this is the most important section right here. 
This right here is the number one search result. This is considered maps and review section. This right here is the next two, three, four in the ranking. And this right here is one of the newer sections that Google has started to add uh, to search results, which is really, it's the people also ask, it's kind of an extra section. And it usually relates to a topic that someone's searching up in here. So other questions that people ask would be, when should, when should you start practicing hypnobirthing? So this actually is where you will pull ideas for blog content from. So if we were to write blog articles for you, we would write something about hypnobirthing, but I would come right here. When should you, we would talk about that in the blog article. What is hypnobirth? Obviously we're going to talk about that. Can I do hypnobirthing on my own? We'll talk about that. How much does hypnobirthing cost? And then we'll finish off the article with that, right? So all of these things are things we're going to cover because here's what's going to happen. People, when you post that article or that content to your site, people are going to start searching for it. When they end up on your site and they read and they stay there for a minute and then potentially call or book an appointment, Google's going to recognize that as a good signal. Now, everybody in your local area who starts searching things around hypnobirthing or what is hypnobirth or any of these related questions, you're going to start showing up in these search results. You can actually start to take over because if I actually go there and click on this, it's just another business's website where they've talked about this content in a blog article or on a service page. And so that's what we want to try to do for you as well. Okay. Uh, finally, again, some of the last few points, Google Maps and Search, we really need to get you to show up here. This is one, going to be one of your biggest sellers as far as getting new traffic and new appointments to your business. Easy pointers here. Number one, adding those geolocation keywords into your content like we mentioned. Number two is getting tons more reviews on Google. Every single customer you have coming in, you're going to want to keep asking continuously, hey, can, would you mind, if you had a great experience, would you mind leaving me a Google review? Your goal is to get to 30 to 50 reviews at the very minimum. And Google kind of uses that as a trigger to say, okay, they're a legitimate business. Now you want them coming in consistently. Don't get to 50 obviously and stop. Right. But once you hit 50, it does one of two things, or it, it does really can do both. The first thing is Google recognizes it as a signal saying, hey, this is a, a steady business. It's a solid business. They have positive reviews. We can recommend them to customers and they won't be pissed that we recommended this business, right? So the second thing is psychologically, people look at a review of a business online and they see, oh, five reviews, not really someone I'm really ready to trust just yet. But if I see 50 positive reviews, I'm way more likely psychologically to say, okay, this person is somebody that has had a lot of happy customers. They're not going to make anyone upset. And so that's really the goal behind getting reviews. Number one, again, Google's going to love you. Number two, it helps customers say we can trust Lisa. That's it. Okay. Um, so again, I mean, when, when, when I'm asking clients to do that, um, I guess I should be providing them with a link or something. Because not you know how people, well, okay. you can really just tell them, hey, just search my business, search Life Balance Atlanta on Google because it looks like this. Yeah. And really, yeah, I, I guess you could copy this URL and give them that URL. We can even show you how to shorten that URL so that way it's simple. It could be like bit.ly.com bit slash, yeah. yeah, slash Life Balance Atlanta review. Um, and you can see right here, now your business is up and I can come down and leave a review on the website. See, write a review. So super simple, and you can actually send people to that link, make that process super streamlined so it's not confusing and people don't ask a thousand questions and take up a bunch of your time that you don't need taken up. Uh, finally, some of the last few points. Uh, did we go through this? Ah, so the good thing is, after going through it, your Google business page or Google My Business account is set up, which is good. That's one of the biggest issues that I see with a lot of businesses. They don't even take the time to set it up. Um, so it is set up and it's good. The only issues that we saw were having multiple uh, of the same image on the actual review page. Um, that's a, a big thing I would say is remove some of those duplicate images. Number two is adding video content. It, it's just a small thing. You don't have to add a video a week or anything like that, but Google does like to know that you at least have a couple of videos from your business practice uploaded into your Google My Business Review. And the reason why is because it gives, it kind of sends a signal to Google that they're more involved than just the basics. Most businesses aren't willing to go outside of that and do just the photos but the ones who usually add videos usually tend to rank higher than ones who don't. Um, so 
is that something I could do myself? And, and what, I mean, what am I doing the video on? I guess a foot, I mean, I could do foot bath, hypnotherapy. Sure. Um, it, it, so they can be instructional videos. That'd be great. Uh, some other types of content would be, I'm sure you have a promotional video of some kind of Life Balance Atlanta, or do you not? So, and that's something we could obviously help you with. Um, you can even do it yourself. The greatest thing about these cell phones now is the cameras are amazing on them. Um, your husband actually met me when I was at Jack and Son's yeah. shop, right? I was in there with my cell phone shooting a video. Narek's wife was talking. Narek is the owner of Jack and Son's. Narek's wife was talking to him. She's like, man, when did you guys have this video production company come out? He goes, no, it was my marketer and he did it all from his cell phone. She goes, what? So really you can get great quality video from a cell phone especially these days. And that's really all you have to do. Even if you started, and a, a quick idea for you, if you started from outside with your camera, walked in, welcome to Life Balance Atlanta, and just did kind of a mini intro. You don't even have to put yourself on camera if you don't feel comfortable, but just showing the inside of the facility. Um, if you do feel comfortable, obviously putting your face on there and letting them know who you, are, who you are, because I feel like with what you do, people want to connect with you because that's part of the experience that they get by coming to your business. Right. So I, I would recommend putting yourself on camera and just talking to people as if you were just talking to them, having a regular conversation. And that's it, basic video like that. And then user content. So one thing that I always have, and you know, Narek has started, and this is proof that it works. Uh, well, I think it was two months ago, Narek, open well it was like three months ago they opened the location and coming i came in a month after and he was telling me he was having an issue getting his coming location to show up in google search results but roswell and john's creek were doing fine and so i told him i was like well the first thing is you don't have enough reviews because it's a brand new location so just start asking everybody to leave a review second thing is start creating user generated content and he goes what is that basically you get testimonials of your customers or have your customer go on Facebook and or Instagram and create a video saying, hey, I was just at Life Balance Atlanta. I feel so much more centered. I, I feel so much more at peace. You guys should really try it out. Something as simple as that, then you can take and download and upload to your Google My Business page is going to do huge amounts of good for your business as far as showing up in search results. So like a video review. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Those are some of the easiest ways to number one, sell your business because people want to see credibility. Credibility comes from a customer going out of their way to take some time because they're not paid and it takes a lot. And everybody knows this. It takes a lot for someone to get on their phone and say, Hey, I really love this business because that, I didn't receive anything by doing that. Really. I'm doing somebody else a favor or taking time out of my day to do something for them that I don't receive anything for, but I'm doing it because I feel so much, gratitude for the service that they provide that I had to do it right and users that are on Google really really vibe with that so any questions about Google my business or any of that so far no I did want to mention um, you did pull up Atlanta birth and baby that is that's sort of a I mean that's another what here yeah that's a Atlanta birth and baby is a that's a kind of a subsidiary of life balance Atlanta oh okay yeah so that's my, that's our, we're, see, Life Balance Atlanta, I didn't want to identify all with pregnancy because we have so many other clients that have nothing to do with that. So I, I started with Atlanta Birth and Baby. That's what we started with. That's why that website is like super old and in terrible need of updating. Okay. Um, but it still brings me a lot of people. Okay. Um, and so. Well, that's actually very smart if you want. But when we opened business. this this location, we, we went with Life Balance Atlanta because it's my initials. Um, ah. And uh, plus it, it's, it's a good name and I like it. Yeah. Um, but uh, so anyway, it's, it's the same thing. Okay. But look. we're trying to just brand Life Balance Atlanta. And you want to keep it separately, separate from the birthing services or are you trying to kind of get rid of Atlanta Birth and Baby? Well, I've been told that getting rid of Atlanta birth and baby would be smart just because it's confusing to people. So like, that's why when you go on the life balance Atlanta, it shows all the birthing stuff and you know, all of that. It's just that, you know, we really just use the website right. as, you know, so here's my recommendation from a marketing perspective. Okay. A quick fix would be to, it's called a 301 redirect. Have you ever heard of that? Nope. A 301 redirect would simply just take that old website and instead of when people 
So say they come here and they click on the actual website. Instead of going to that website, what it does is it forwards all of that traffic then to lifebalanceatlanta.com, which is okay. a good signal because Google's saying, okay, anybody who's searching for birthing services, they're, they keep going to this site, but then we're forwarding it to Life Balance Atlanta. So you're actually going to send all of that SEO value to your new website. So okay. I would get, uh, you know, if you have access to the web developer or if you know someone that can, or if you guys need us to do it, obviously, um, I would have a 301 redirect from your old site all the way over to Life Balance Atlanta. And then you don't even have to worry about that site anymore because it'll never show up in search results again. If it does, okay. it's just going to take them to Life Balance. Okay. It's good. So to wrap everything up, I'm pretty sure we're almost done. The last slide is, I don't know why it's being so silly today won't work right. The last slide is about what our last couple of slides are about web presence with regards to your listing and review sites. Have you heard of a listing site or a review site before? Obviously you've heard of review sites. Do you know what a listing site is? So there are over 300 listing and review sites on the web right now. It's actually getting closer to 400 because new ones come up every day. You've heard of like squares, uh, Foursquare before? Yes. Yeah. So sites just like Foursquare, Yelp, uh, Google's a listing site, all kinds of them out there. And the key here is these listing sites are kind of like an index. It's kind of like a phone book almost. And Google takes and other search engines like Yahoo and Bing uh, take these indexes and they look for information about your business. So your business name, your phone number, your address. And they want to see that all three of those pieces of information are the same all across the web. The issue is, unless you have a service that goes through and automatically uploads this information to all of those listing sites, you have to do all of this manually, which can take okay. weeks <laughs> to try and do it manually. It really takes forever. Um, luckily, there are services out there that, and this is really what we're trying to do right here, is get it more like, and I would even adjust this a little bit, because this should be Life Balance Atlanta, which we can make a small adjustment very quickly and that'll be okay. Um, but it would be Life Balance Atlanta, and then you can have all of your other keywords kind of thrown in after that. But the primary business name needs to be in there. Um, and that's what we want is we want the business name, the address, and the phone number to be the same and consistent through every single listing and review site. So this will actually, that small fix, which can be done in a matter of a month, it'll take a month just to update across the web but we can do it in a matter of a button click and make it super simple. Uh, but that alone, again, will help optimize. So that way when people search, they see the same information no matter where they're searching for your business. And again, with Google, it's all about continuity. They wanna make sure that everything is the same. They wanna make sure that page structures are done neatly um, and that there is a differentiation between a top level page on your website and a sub page on your website, that they're not the same, they're not sending duplicate words or duplicate messaging across the web. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Finally, tracking. This is, and this is only important if you're really, really wanting to understand where people are coming from on Google and then understand what actions they're taking on your site that lead them to setting an appointment. And this can be done with either Facebook ads, it can be done with just general organic search, it can be done with paid search, PPC, which you've probably heard before. Um, all of that has to do with tracking. And really the biggest thing is we need to get tracking set up on your website. At the very least, Google Analytics. I'm not sure if that's set up on your website. I didn't see anything. Um, I'm gonna guess that since we couldn't find any Google tags that Google Analytics isn't set up on the site, which is huge, it'll tell us what are your most important pages to the customers that are coming to your website? What are the most popular? And that actually helps us determine how we should rank the pages, how we should place them to try and sell more of your services to more customers. Finally, the last thing that you can be doing, and this is the last slide, and then we'll go through a couple of other things, uh, is Facebook and Instagram marketing. And this is where, you know, we were in there that day shooting video for Narek and he's had so much success with his campaign. He'd be happy to tell you about it if, if you would like to hear some kind of stories from him. But basically what we did was the day that I was in there, I came in and I shot a video and it was called treat yourself. That was kind of the theme. And it's basically, you know, it was essentially men work hard, but we like to look good too. So treat yourself. And it was, you know, about all of the different services that they provide when you're getting a haircut. Um, we literally took that video, put it out into the coming market, and then started to retarget or remarket to people who had seen that video 
or visited uh, Merrick's appointment page or website. And that is the biggest thing right there that really helps a lot of business owners start to set more appointments and close more deals. Most people and most smart shoppers, I'm sure you're probably the same, don't go out and just impulse buy a lot of things, especially with like a haircut. I'm, I know me, I'm not going to go get a haircut from someone if I haven't thoroughly done my research because nobody likes a bad haircut. Um, and that's really what this does is it kind of reinforces the message, but also it keeps the message in front of the user. So that way, by the time it, they do come to a decision to make a purchasing decision, they know who they want. And I'm sure you know, it's all about who you remember. If you don't remember the business name, you're never going to go to them. You're going to go again. You'll do a search that day. And even though you've done your research, you're going to go with the first option that really comes to mind. And if you're not ranking in search results, or if you haven't recently shown them an ad, then we're really not gonna close any of those deals, right? So that's where all of this kind of comes together. Ranking in search, so that way when people do search, they find you, but also when they get you know, a week from now and they still haven't made an appointment yet, we wanna be the ones on Facebook and Instagram who are sitting in front of them. I'm sure you've been on Facebook and you've been to a website prior and then you see the same thing you were looking at scrolling through Facebook. It's like a banner ad, isn't that what that is? No, so a banner ad is more like, uh, banner ads are like, on news websites, the ones that you see going okay. across the top. These are called literally retargeting ads in your news okay. feed. Um, and it, that's really, really what you should classify it as is a retargeting ad. Because what they're doing is we, we set, have you heard of the Facebook pixel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the pixel, all it does is it tracks people who go to your website. If I have a Facebook account and I visit your website and you're running ads, you now have the option to target people who visited your website in the last seven days, 30 days, 24 hours. You can uh, target people who visited specific web pages. So if you wanted to specifically upsell more of your hypnobirthing, we could create an audience of people who visited your hypnobirthing page and send them a message saying, hey, we saw you're interested in hypnobirthing. You know, why don't you set an appointment and we can, or why don't you call us and we can talk a little bit more about what hypnobirthing is and how it can benefit you. And that's essentially what that is doing. But again, the most important part is being there when they're getting time, when they're at the time where they're going to make that decision to call someone or set the appointment. Right. So even a small budget of 500 to 1,000 a month would instantly increase the amount of people setting appointments. Uh, what would you say the average appointment you know, is worth to your business? When somebody, and let's think lifetime too, like average person for hypnobirthing, they come in how many times and what would you say that's worth? Well, the hypnobirthing is a class, so it's five classes, okay. and uh, that's three ninety-five for a couple. So, um, okay, you know, like you know, um, like a hypnotherapy client. Um, generally, uh, you know, I have a higher price for the first visit, and then every visit after that is a little bit lower. So, I would say probably when we're usually done with whatever issue they want to work on, I would say probably, um, let me see. I would say, um, right between like five and 700. Okay. Yeah. And see if we can close three of those a month, which would not be hard at all. We've already made your money back on the ad spend plus the money you would spend to pay me. So everybody past that third appointment is just going to be straight profit. Really, even before that, it would be straight profit. Um, and so that's the thing. Just by retargeting those people and saying, hey, we're going to stay in front of you until you make that decision. We're going to let you know. Also, one of the big things that we do for even Eric's campaign, we also include a video testimonial reel. So that way, instead of having to go search for testimonials, we're targeting the people who have already visited those service pages with our customers saying, this is why they chose us. This is why you should choose us. So making the sales process so much easier because now we don't have to do as much convincing because we're showing other customers happy experiences. And so that's where retargeting and remarketing could instantly increase your sales by, if you're not doing it currently, which we know you're not because I, I can see the ads running or not, if you were to start doing it, could instantly increase sales by 400, 500% in every service area, depending on the budget that you spent. Now that would require you know, the maximum spend of budget, but even if you did a minimum, very minimum spend, we're increasing sales by two to 300% easily. That's just awesome. Big, yeah. So, and that's, that's really the biggest thing that we think you should do. Most importantly, making some small adjustments to your website because search is going to be your most important tool. 
Search engine ranking or SEO is going to be your most important thing because again, that's where people are coming to find your service first. That's where they initially find you, called the top of funnel, right, in sales. Then we get to the middle of funnel area where they've seen your service, but now they're thinking about it a little bit. They need some more convincing. That's where the testimonials come in. Have you received any awards or anything like that for the services you provide? No, but, but you know, the, <laughs> here, there's a couple things that I should probably tell you. Sure. Um, because I'm also, the, you know, a practitioner here, I don't just run the business. Sure. Um, that, uh, you know, these kind of things have kind of been put on the back burner. And also, I'm, um, I don't know how I should say this. I'm a little, um, I'm not really, like, a person that's like, look at me, like I'm sure. so wonderful. But you can see from the few reviews that we have, I mean, we, we have really satisfied clients. Right. Um, and I'm super particular about like, you know, just everything about the business. And I know that that doesn't reflect out, you know, in the, in the general public because I've kind of been a little bit like, you know, like right. maybe hiding it. or, um, you know, in trying to perfect everything that, you know, that I'm not really doing a good job about putting our, our word out there. Well, that's a good thing though. That's not a bad thing at all because nobody likes somebody who's going to boast, right? All we're saying is your customers want to see why you're so great. And it's not from a bragging perspective, but we have to inform them because otherwise exactly. they can't make an informed decision. And so that's where we really need to not boast, but show people, Hey, we did this and this is why our customers love us. Here's some customers telling you why they love us. And that's all we really need to start showing people. And that again is super, super important to not only getting the word out there about your business, but making sure people understand why Life Balances Atlanta is the place to come to relax and kick back and get back and really get centered again, right? Right. So that's, that's these are the areas we think. Again, first and foremost, Fixing a couple of things on the website to make it more sales oriented so people find things easier, they're able to book things easier because it's all about ease of use. Second of all, making sure you show up in search engine results so that way when people are searching for those services, you're right there in their face. And then third of all, once they get to your site and see everything, we're going to stay in front of them a little bit and follow them around so that way they're ready to buy or when they're ready to buy, they know we're right here for them. We're here right. for them is really what it's all about. So those are the three services we think that we would provide if we were to work with you is a little bit of website design and maintenance, SEO from a technical and local perspective. And then I would really, really include or want to include uh, Instagram and Facebook remarketing. If you have a smaller budget, that's fine. We would only start with remarketing campaigns at first. We wouldn't do any top of funnel like flashy videos like I did for Neric but we could easily start with a small spend to remarket to those people who have already been visiting your site to begin with and making sure that they actually confirm those appointments with you. So I okay. haven't put together a proposal yet because I wanted to just have this conversation with you first, give you an idea of some things you can make adjustments on yourself if you want. Um, and I, again, I'm going to send this over to you. I'll make sure you get access to this video we've been doing as well. But I do and I would like to set another call with you to go over a proposal that I think would be super beneficial to your business. It would cover all three of these areas. Uh, we can do different price points and I can provide a couple of different price points. Do you have an idea of what a, I guess, a budget would be for a monthly project like this? Have you thought about you know, spending on something like this before? If so, what do you think that might be? Because I wouldn't want to go outside of your price range. Right. Um, well, let's see. You know, I, I was I, I was using um, a marketing person before, and it was um, I think we were, I think she was doing it like six fifty a month. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm willing to go up a little bit if we can. I mean, if you can fill my hypnobirthing classes, you can. I mean, I've got other therapists that you know. I have another therapist that works here now. I mean, if we can fill our schedules, and to be honest with you, I mean, our our goal is to. I would love to duplicate. I would love to have other locations. Okay. Um, and, and to be honest with you, um, I would like to get to the point where, um, you know, I'm kind of doing the more specialized things like the um, hypnosis and uh, hypnobirthing and, um, and kind of letting the other, you know, the other things go um, 
with, you know, with, with my other therapist. Cause again, I'm super fastidious about who I bring in and, sure. you know, I make sure that they're absolutely like the best fit. Right. Um, so that's why we don't have like five or six massage therapists here. We, you know, um, I've gone through many. And, um, so, uh, so I just kind of want to keep that, um, you know, as we're establishing our brand, I want to keep the, the, the quality there. So then people know no matter where they go to a life balance Atlanta, it's going to be, you know, the same quality. So, sure. you know, I'm open to, to raising that up a little bit. I mean, I don't have like a unlimited, sure. um, totally you know, understand. cause we're a small business, sure. but, um, but I'm definitely willing if I feel confident and that you can kind of get us, you know, ramped up because sure. this has been kind of one of the, one of the, um, cause I've talked to a lot of people I've, you know, I've had, you know, different coaching situations and everybody says the exact same thing. You are playing too small. You are, you're hiding behind this, you know, this thing of comfort and just like you, like, I just need to bust out and, you know, show people exactly what we offer here because we, we really are, we're, we're a, um, and, and, you know, here I am boasting about myself, but it's okay because okay. We, we really, we really are, um, we, we provide some really, really great services here. And, um, and, you know, and I mean, changing people's lives. And I know that sounds, you know, dramatic, but um, like I have a lady right today, she's driving from Commerce, Georgia to see me. So, um, you know, That's it's, right. it's, it's not, yeah, it is. And she's going to be doing hypnotherapy. So she's going to be coming and she's, you know, she's okay with that. But, um, but also too, you know, we don't, we don't tout ourselves as like, I'm able to do hypnotherapy over zoom, you know, I'm able to do, um, you know, so we really haven't explored that with, with people like, we, you know, we're able to do virtual classes and things like that. Um, yeah, you know, I yeah. want to provide, I want to provide, um, like we have, we have little like, you know, social get togethers here where we were before COVID. Um, you know, like we have like Reiki share and we have like health talks and things like that, you know, and I want those to be full and like, you know, I would, I would get maybe, you know, five people or three people or something like that. And, and I'd still do the presentation, but it's a lot better when you have, you know, the, you know better energy in the room and all of that. Sure. And so let me, let me, I guess, kind of chime in on a couple of things. First of all, it is totally okay for you to be confident and talk goodly. I guess that goodly is not my favorite word, but I got it <laughs> about your services. Um, just to kind of fill you in on a little bit about what I do, changing lives is what I really, really appreciate. So I actually run a YouTube channel. Um, and that's really what got me full time into running my marketing agency was I was teaching people about digital marketing and so that's what I do. I have over 3,000 students that I teach digital marketing to and how to start an agency. The coolest part of it for me, and again, not to try and brag, but I love seeing people come into my program. They have no college experience whatsoever, and they start this program. They start to learn digital marketing, and now I have students who dropped out of college and are now doing $100,000 per month with their agency. And they're wow. like, Jordan, I, I never thought this would have happened, but that is, it's something that you have to share. Because people right. want to see that positive change in other people's lives. They want to see that you're having that effect on them. And again, that's all something we can do. And like I said, if you're doing five to 700 on a therapy set on a, you know, a lifetime value of a, a therapy session, 395 for a hypnobirthing class, that's easy. Now that, that's great. for the whole series. That's for a sure. series of five, but still. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And yep. if we can book one, you know, if we book five of those in a month, that's covering your, your entire ad cost. So everything right. we sell past that is pure profit. Right. Um, and that's the thing you said you want to grow. The only way we can do this is by increasing those clients coming in, making more people happy, and then expanding down southward into the Atlanta area. I'm guessing that's where you would probably head towards next is a little further south, or would you probably go more north? No, I probably would go further south initially. And then, you know, maybe out like in the Johns Creek area, we used to live over there and I have, you know, um, quite a following over there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, probably down. I mean, you know, my person that helped me with marketing before she lived in Buckhead. So, okay. um, you know, they were screaming for me to come down to Buckhead. I'm sure. Um, but, I, you know, it depends. I, further south, whether it be, you know, Buckhead or not, I don't know. Um, Buckhead and Midtown definitely further fine. south than here. But Buckhead and Midtown are prime because people in the Buckhead Midtown area really 
they're a lot more spiritual, I would say. And, and I feel like this has a lot to do with just a centered, uh, Correct. centered mind, uh, a, a centered spirituality. And so I think that that would be a really cool thing. Plus you said you could do zoom calls, man, if we can get you to start booking some zoom calls, that would be amazing because that would easily increase your sales without requiring you to have you know, customers drive from, you know, wherever they're coming from hours away and we can still book those appointments. So I think we should start small first though, really focus in on your local area and then expand from there, like you said. So okay. what is a day and time that works for you where we could actually go over the proposal um, for life balance? Okay, let me look and see. Um, if you'd like, we can do Thursday or Friday this week. I can put something together by then. Or if you'd rather, we can do Monday, Tuesday next week as well. No, I think I want to do it as soon as possible. I do have some time. Um, is 10 o'clock your earliest or no? I can, can you do early. earlier than? Yes, okay. I can do early on Friday morning. Um, 9 a.m.? Uh, yeah, 9 a.m. would be good. 9, 9 a.m. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. Uh, and I will let you get out of here because I'm sure you have tons to do. No, that's okay. I just have a client coming in 10 minutes, but that's cool. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. Sorry. Okay, I'm sending that invite over now. And actually what I'll do is of the, on the day of, um, I will send you a Zoom call link. So that way we can just do it on Zoom again since that's way easier. Um, but other than that, have a great rest of your week. Have a great appointment. And I look forward to speaking to you on Friday. All right, great. Thanks, Jordan. Have a good one. Bye. Bye-bye.